Chris Letang has been playing some outstanding hockey for most of March, but before the Penguins traveled to Colorado and Dallas earlier this week, I said there would be absolutely no point in breaking down his performance just because the Penguins had by no means locked up a playoff spot. They were missing several key players on the back end uh, due to injury. It just did not seem like something that was at the top of the totem pole. But after seeing the way Latang played on that road trip and specifically against the Stars the other night, I have changed my mind and we are going to break down some Chris Latang film. In this video, I wanted to specifically look at Latang's work and impact in transition defense and what he's been doing to help mitigate and limit the opposition's ability to create chances off the rush or even so much as transition the puck effectively to establish possession in the offensive zone. This first clip here, on a, just as an aside, I have slowed these clips down by about 5% just so that they're a little bit slower and you can get a better idea of what's going on in these in these bang-bang plays. So in this first clip, the puck's getting rimmed around the wall as the Penguins are in the offensive zone. The Stars forward that's going to go and try to play the puck is Jason Robertson. Latang isn't necessarily pinching here or going to pinch on this play, um, but he's not retreating to the neutral zone either. That's that's not what the Penguins do. You very, very rarely see the defenseman peel off unless they know there's going to be imminent pressure otherwise. But what Latang's going to do as this puck nears Robertson along the wall is that he's just going to kind of stand his ground. And even though this puck was likely bouncing and wobbling as it came to Robertson, he didn't have enough time and space to make a clean reception of the puck. As so, it gets by him and hops out to the neutral zone, right onto the stick of P.O. Joseph, and he's going to look to get the Penguins back up ice. As he's looking to, to wheel the puck, Latang is going to take more of a straight-ahead angle back to his own blue line as Robertson is finding his way toward the middle lane. Once Latang reaches that Dr. Pepper logo on the bottom left of your screen, though, he's going to make a pretty sharp cut to the middle of the ice, and that's going to end up working out really well for him and the Penguins because after Joseph tries to advance this puck, it hops right to Robertson. He's got Joe Pavelski streaking up the left wing, and he's going to try and slip a backhand pass to him, but because of the angle and route that Latang took, he was in perfect position to get a stick on this puck. Even if he missed it here, he's got Brian Russ backtracking, and at this stage of his career, Joe Pavelski is not exactly a burner, so if this pass were to get through, Russ would likely be there to be able to catch up to him and make a play. But that's obviously not what happened. Latang got a stick on it, and the Penguins are quickly counterattacking and not long after end up with a decent chance off the stick of Sidney Crosby. This next sequence here, Latang's going to try and quickly advance the puck out to his forwards at center ice, but Stars forward Joel Kiviranta is going to pick it off and immediately take the offensive blue line with possession. Now you can see after Kiviranta crosses the blue line, Latang does not have a very strong gap here at all. Typically, um, you don't want to give any forward this much time and space after they're coming into the zone. But what I love about the way Latang played this is that if you take a look at the positioning and angle of his skates, his hips, and his shoulders, he's not facing Kiviranta head on here. So essentially, he's in a good position to defend Kiviranta no matter what happens. If Kiviranta wants to take the middle, he's not on his back, he's not on his heels, he's not facing him head on and at risk of, of getting beat from a side-to-side -side deke or a move. And if Kiviranta tries to beat him wide, all he needs to do is make a quick cut to change his angle and he'll be able to try and seal him off along the boards. But Kiviranta decides he's going to try and take the middle and fire a shot but as soon as that happens Latang is going to stick um, get his stick on it and as soon as that happens puck falls it to Kiviranta's feet and Latang uses that as an opportunity to play the body shortly after Casey DeSmith has a very easy cover and a whistle Last clip from the first period, nothing too crazy or high level going on here. Um, Latang, instead of skating backward, 
um, defended this rush skating forward. And just as I mentioned in the last clip, if Kivi Ranta had tried going wide, um, just as we see here, Latang is basically able to take a perfect angle to close the gap on the Stars forward racing down the left wing. And eventually he closes the gap, gets the Stars forward in an unfavorable position and knocks him off the puck. Penguins are quickly able to gain possession and make their way out of the defensive zone. Next clip comes from the third period. Latang fires a shot from a few feet above the right circle. Uh, but you can see it was an unfavorable bounce for the Penguins. And as the Stars winger along the boards on the far side of the ice is about to gain possession of the puck, you can see that all of Ricard Raquel, Evgeny Malkin, and Jason Zucker are below the circles. That could potentially be a problem for them, uh, but this actually works out really well because of the way that Latang tracked and read this play. So if you take a look right here, you'll see that the star's forward that's about to get the puck is shoulder checking to see where his puck support is, and that's going to be Jamie Benn in the middle of the ice. Latang is tracking him and essentially surfing across the ice with Ben rather than just kind of falling back and skating backward. Uh, ben kind of shoots himself in the foot here, though, because he takes a really deep cut and basically skates straight at his teammate rather than giving him a little bit of space and spreading the Penguins' defensive coverage. Um, and as this puck is about to get to the blue line, Latang realizes that he's got an opportunity to come all the way across the ice and stop this play before it even gets to center ice because Ben had cut so, so far to the other side of the ice. He knows he has P.O. Joseph back. He takes the opportunity to step up, bobbling puck, lays a hit, and once again, the Penguins are able to stymie a transition for the Stars and quickly counterattack. The last clip comes here with the Penguins trailing by a goal with about six minutes to go in the third period. This is another situation where a puck is being rimmed along the wall as the Penguins are in the offensive zone. Um, Latang uses this as an opportunity to activate and pinch because the only Penguin skater on the strong side of the ice with the puck is Brian Rust, but he's down below the goal line and is already um, below the puck here. So Latang's going to step up and he is going to prevent this puck from exiting the zone. However, his pass ends up right back on the stick of a star skater and a quick chip and they are out of the zone. With Latang being so deep after activating, it looked like the Stars might be able to create something here, but Latang had already been tracking and he knew exactly where he needed to be. P.O. Joseph stepped up and out of nowhere, Latang is intercepting that puck, making a great move around Jamie Benn and then eventually threading a backhand pass to Sidney Crosby so that the Penguins could get back on the, ta back on the attack looking to tie the game. Uh, Chris Letang, I have nothing but great things to say about the way he's turned his season around and the way he's playing right now. If the Penguins are going to end up making the playoffs and potentially going on any sort of run, Letang is without a doubt going to have a big impact in that regard.